Hey everyone, Pupsker here, and today in Warframe, we're making a Warframe tier list. Going over every Warframe in the game, our 2024 tier list for the best Warframes in the game. Of course, this is purely for fun type of tier list, okay? Tier lists don't matter in a game like Warframe in the clearest meta sense because Warframe is a PvE based game where you can build things any way you want, especially with the Helminth, Arcanes, uh, Archon Shards. There's just so much variety. So you can make any Warframe an S tier, godlike Warframe if you want to, and if you find a build that works for you or Helminth on something and makes them godly. Yeah, there's a billion ways to do it, so keep that in mind. And we're just gonna talk about Warframes casually and what I rate them more so. It's gonna be obviously biased on what I like and what I hate because that's what a tier list is. That's every tier list ever created. So without further ado, let's get into the Warframes and go one by one. I think there's what, 54, 55 or so Warframes now, so. Yeah, Corvex will be the last one. It's gonna take a while, and obviously we're ignoring all of the Necromex and all of the general Arcwings. So, let's get to it. And as always, if you wanna support the channel, you can use Epic Games Creator Code Pupsker. You can subscribe, like, or check out any of my social medias. You can join the YouTube membership if you wanna support me financially, or join the Twitch subscription, which is kind of the same thing. So thank you all so much. Now, let's take a look at all the Warframes. So Ash is a pretty cool long time Warframe at this point. Invisibility, Assassin, Ninja Frame. Has cool teleports. I think some general explosions if you build them properly. You got some augment mods. Very, very strong overall if you like his kit. I myself, not a huge Ash fan. I like the generals of his kit, but it's not something that I tend to play. He's pretty much like, well, if you've played New Stalker, Stalker is pretty much just an upgraded augmented version of Ash, but Ash is definitely really good. So while he is a strong assassin tier Warframe, I'm gonna place him rank A. Mm, no, not rank A. I'm gonna place him rank B, because I just purely don't like playing him enough. We'll chuck him in the ban rank B tier of the tier list, okay? Cool Warframe, like him but I just don't like him enough and I don't choose to play him often. So strong, but I'll throw him in B. Next up is Atlas. Atlas is a tanky rock boy Warframe, spawns some dudes, throws rocks around, punches very well if you like punching. But his entire kit is just straight up pretty outdated, boring, and the variety on it is just not fun. So I wouldn't say it's anything amazing. But you can technically play him if you like him. I just wouldn't consider Punchy Boy high tier. They could have made it his punches exalted and they like an exalted weapon, and they probably would have been a lot better. But sadly, Atlas is one of those Warframes that I'd say like I wouldn't bother with him if you don't like his kit, because it's just you know he doesn't pack a good weight for his punch. So let's throw Atlas over here in the D tier. I think he's good, I just don't think he's like good enough to play over anyone else in the game, especially when you have Warframes like Valkyr. He just kind of sucks and is, nah, not worth your time. Okay, next up we have Banshee Banshee Prime. So Banshee is a pretty good AoE type Warframe, Sonar Frame, has good confusion, uh, I think like stun staggers, generally is strong if you like the kit, not a huge fan of Banshee all the same, but I could definitely recognize her kit's very usable, right? I think you can do some good nukes with her if you do certain setups, but she's more of, I guess, a CC AoE frame, but the damage multiplier on Sonar is really nice, so get some good weak points. Overall, still a good frame, is an earlier frame, so that's what she suffers from, just being generally outdated, but her overall kit is still pretty good overall. So while she wouldn't be highest tier, I think I would still throw her, yeah, maybe in like a C tier. I don't really care for her all that much. I don't like that her fourth ability requires you to just stop, you know, she has other drawbacks, but if you like her like more passive kit, go for it. I'm just gonna chuck Banshee over in C tier. Okay, now we have Baruch, the pacifist monk. Dude likes punching, dude has exalted fists, but I'm not a huge player of him. Good like CC, or not CC, sorry, just general damage reduction type shenanigans with that shield, lull and eluder. You know, could be better, could be worse. I like him, he's cool, but he is also not the best Warframe these days. You have better uh, Exalted Melee Frames IMO, but he isn't a bad Exalted Melee Frame, so. I'm not a huge Baruch player as well. It's gonna be like 
10%, maybe 25 to 45% of the Warframes I play a good chunk, others, nah. So we'll vote him solidly in B tier, because, you know, while he is cool and he is somewhat fun to play if you like Exalted Fists, his kit's not the best and it's not the most interesting, and he's just, you know, kind of like a... A kind of like a Valkyr that I don't like. I like Valkyr more, so I'll probably be more biased with her. Haha! -ha. No, biased with everyone. Next up is Caliban. Caliban is a newer Warframe and overall has some decent stuff in his kit, right? Fourth is a, I think, armor reduction type CC. You have the spawn up shield regen bros, which are nicer these days with a uh, general shield gating. So gotta put props to that. Then you got your little uh, damage vulnerability and spinning top ability. So a little weird of a kit somewhat. I generally don't care for his spinning top, but the rest of his kit I find pretty strong. Probably needs some casting speed because fourth ability takes a while to cast, but all things considered, I think Caliban is pretty good, but maybe not the most fun or most interesting Warframe for a lot of people. You could probably pretty solidly throw Caliban in like a, B tier, and I think I'm just gonna throw your boy in A tier for now, mainly because of the addition of like better shield gate shenanigans, also having DR, also, or like armor shred DR type stuff, also having damage multiplier, you know, he's just a pretty nice frame overall, he can always helm and stuff, so I'm gonna throw your boy Caliban in A tier. Clap, 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 clap. Judge it so much if you want, and as always, sub, like, use Epic Games creator code Pupsker if you want to support the channel, and we continue on with the tier list. Next up we have is Chroma. In the year of the dragon, we have the dragon Warframe himself. Chroma is one of those Warframes that they just, uh... They're just outdated and kind of lame, right? Good, some elemental statuses, casually, awesome, cool. Uh, you can't even read this ability, but it is good. It's just, you know, another passive ability. He's got Vex Armor, ooh, more passive type throw on abilities. And then you have Effigy, which is actually decent enough because he gets some loot. So Chroma's kit is very boring, okay? It is like legitimately another Inaros type kit but better, of course. But that's the sort of idea you have with uh, Chroma. You chuck on your one ability to like throw down the effigy and then you have all of your passives just thrown on, running around, shooting out fire if you want. Like Chroma's a weird frame, but overall I still think Chroma is a good frame, but a very passively good frame. So if you love passives and just running around, it's the frame for you. If you don't like using abilities, oh, is Chroma the frame for you? Because you won't have to use a ton of abilities, but I'm gonna throw Chroma in C tier, because like, god damn, is Chroma boring? People only use Chroma for Profit Taker. Just such a passive, boring ass frame, and uh, man, gotta, just gotta not care about Chroma. So yeah, Ripperino on Chroma right there. Next up, everyone, we have Citrine. Okay, so Citrine is a newer Warframe who is more of a damage support Warframe with tankiness. She has everything you kind of need in a kit, which is hilarious to me. Good passive, which is just regen. Cool, AOE regen for allies. Your first ability just gives you health and energy orbs. Your second ability is an active uh, de damage resistance that you have to keep killing enemies to build. Really strong overall. Overall, blah, blah. Her third ability is a status turret that relies on you hitting the enemies and then it'll hit them back. And her fourth ability is a insane crit chance increase damage increase essentially ability. So Citrine has everything in a sense. She has support, she has damage increase, she has ally buffing, she has armor reduction almost. Well, technically. I'm saying armor reduction via her third ability being heat possibility. So she has a little bit of armor reduction there and then just damage, right? So she is without a doubt S tier Warframe, okay? S tier Warframe. You may be able to hear my dog bark in the background. He agrees that Citrine is without a doubt an S tier frame because she just has everything. She's strong in any game mode. Her passive is good. Her All of her abilities are good. If anything, maybe you'll want to swap out her first ability for like a better support ability, but it's still a really good support ability. So she's just all around versatile, can do everything. So mwah, 10 out of 10, love her for the game. She's good everywhere. So that's why I'm voting her 10. 
S tier 10. Next up, everyone, is Dagath. Oh, another new frame. And as you know, Warframe likes making newer frames strong as possible. So she is an insanely good damage frame and her survivability is really good too. You can build her health tank, shield tank. You can do whatever you feel like doing, like shield catalyzing, shield type tanking. You can do whatever you want with her. She has a good kit. Her first and second ability just essentially make enemies take more damage and slow the hell out of them. It kind of works well in tandem, right? They also suffer viral damage. Like, she is just insane. Her third ability is just like, oh, you want to do a ton of damage and have an invincibility? Awesome, you can do it. Your fourth ability? Oh, high damage and DR? Okay, no, nah, she's insane. So she's a very good overall strong Warframe. If you just want to do damage, you want to survive, and you want to just, you know, play Warframe. So I'm rating her as well as S tier. Oh, wow, newer frames are more likely to be S tier? Yeah, because their kits are just better and funner and stronger to play casually, for sure. She kills everything. She can solo everything, no problem. You can play her blindfolded. She has every kit kit item that needs, uh, or sorry, anything in her kit for every type of mission as well, so she's insanely versatile, so guess what? 10 out of 10, I would Dagath again, try her out. She is one of the newer frames, and that is what it is. Next up, we have is Ember, Ember Prime, and she's been reworked, like, updated once or twice as a Warframe. Overall, Fire Warframe has some good augment mods, stuff like that. Her general kit is really strong now, especially if you just want to solo shenanigans with all of her DR, armor reduction, AoE fire and stuff, so she has been updated to now be insanely strong. People, you know, maybe love her, maybe hate her. I'm not sure what people generally think of Ember, but I'm gonna put her as a general S tier Warframe right now because of just how strong she is in general Warframe. I think a Fireframe in general is strong, but pairing her with an armor reduction type ability and all of the fire damage and buffs, ah, it just works pretty well. So I think she's like S tier, maybe A tier, you know. Tell me if you like her, tell me if you hate her, get mad at my tier list or not, I don't know, but I think she's pretty hype. Next up, we have Equinox. Equinox rises from the edge of day and night. So she has a night form and a day form, two general build setup type of abilities for her. One is more armor based, night, I think, yeah. Night is the more tanky based one and day is the general damage tier. So her first ability, strong, right? Strong straight up, but it's a little odd. So her kit is, you know, a little goofy. You can also go in day night form, by the way, and it's kind of like a little bit of both. So love her, hate her. She is a stronger Warframe from back in the day. I don't personally like her too much, but her kit does work well for either being a cooler tank or being a higher damage friend. So yeah, you choose what you want. I'm gonna throw her solidly in B tier. She's really strong if you like her. She can both survive and do damage, but you gotta swap around your abilities a little bit here and there, depending on what you feel like doing. And her kit does definitely feel outdated, so it might not be as fun as others. So I think I think I'll throw her in B tier for now. It's, it's where we park pretty strong, pretty good frames, but nothing you particularly love or find super special about them, so we'll throw her there. Ah yes, Excalibro, the solid, cool, awesome Warframe, poster boy of Warframe. He's a ninja, he has blinds, a sweet elemental sword, some cool ass augment mods, and he does damage well. He can survive in pretty much any circumstance, and you know what, what else could you ask for? Overall, though, I don't think he's super OP whatsoever. He's just a fun, strong, nice frame to play. And when you get Excalibur, the AI can do some shenanigans. So, hey, I would also throw Excal over in B tier. I think any Warframe in the game can clear any content, so that's not really anything you need to worry about. But he doesn't have to go out of his way too hard to build for it. You just need to blind people and hit with your sword or do other stuff if you feel like it. So, hey, he's a good frame. I like him. Today, we now have Frost, the little defensive Warframe. 
generally is a goofy Warframe, but is strong if you like his kit now. Has a defensive bubble, little ice wave, little freeze overall. You got a cool bubble that does damage and stuff. You're sorry, freeze that does damage and stuff. Oh my god, has some armor reduction. Overall, Frost is a good frame, much better once you actually get some augment mods in him, but he's a boring, outdated frame as well. While I used to maybe put him D or C tier, these days he'd probably solidly go B tier because of how much stronger he's become with little buffs over time and whatnot and augment mods. He's just not a super fun or an awesome Warframe to play, and if I want a more defensive frame, I usually just rather go Gara or Kachis even with Limbo, right? I just don't find him an option over other Warframe. So that's why I think we park him in B tier. Clap, 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 clap. B tier Frost. B tier Frost. Next up, we have Gara Gara Prime. Okay, right after Frost. True. So Gara is a pretty nice glass Warframe. Has some good defensive abilities, some good damage increase abilities, and overall can also be used in a wide variety of missions. I like her as a better alternative to Frost, depending on what you're looking for. And you know what? I just like the fact that you can do a lot of damage with her, just not changing her kit out, casually beating stuff up while still defending the target. So her and Frost are just pretty formidably the same, just a little different, but they work pretty much the same these days. And I just like her as a slightly better alternative to Frost if you want to just do a little bit more damage until you get augment mod, stuff like that. So I like her. Love Gara. I'm gonna throw her A tier comparative to Frost because you know that's that's just where I think she belongs. That's where I think she belongs. So let me know what you think on that. Love or hate, but I think she's pretty cool. Now we have Garuda, the blood frame, the slashy, bleedy blood lady. So she is the creepiest Warframe in that sense. You have your sweet dread mirror. Actually love that ability. It's a nice forward facing uh, defensive damage increase type attack. She has her blood altar for damage and heals. Oh, right. Bloodletting. You can just be like, guess what? Less health, more energy. I don't die because statuses. So she has a good play style and her fourth is just more bleed. More bleed, more damage, right? Overall, I like her kit. I think she's really cool and very fun and kind of fucked up because blood frame, you know, blood mummy, she's just, oh my god, she's just gonna suck you dry, but like in a blood sense. So I like her kit and I think it's a lot of fun and it is really strong, hard to die, especially depending on how you feel like building her and just, God, slash frame is top tier to me. So I'm gonna throw her on A. I don't think she's S tier, okay? She's not that good. She's not that invulnerable. She could do more damage, but I am gonna throw her on A tier because I think she's pretty fun and I like her blood mommy aesthetic with her kit. So 10 out of 10, would Garuda again. Oh boy, next up we have Gauss. Gauss Prime is coming shortly in Warframe and everyone's pretty excited about that, right? Mock Rush, Kinetic Plating, Thermal Sunder, <gasps> Redline. Gauss is one of those Warframes which I would probably always throw high tier as a Warframe. You have good damage increases, you have good speed increases, you have good DR, you have good uh, damage, or sorry, armor shred, armor tear. I may have said DR when I meant armor shred and stuff like that, but he has a little bit of everything and is a fast frame. Think of him like cooler Volt, or you like Volt more, so you think Volt is cooler Gauss. They're both very comparable and honestly kind of the same, but both are really strong. It's just funny to me that they had Volt and then they're like, what if we made another one? And then they made another one and he's, uh, no shock, a god as well. So I would say throw him either A or S tier. He goes around here, depending on if you love him more or less, right? So he's really good, okay? He's just a very good buffing and very good damage frame and fun play style in general. So 10 out of 10. Oh boy, next up is Grendel. Well, I hated Grendel a lot when he released. Now, Grendel is pretty playably cool and nice and actually decent enough with good passives and active abilities. You have Feast, Nourish, which can work well on anyone, so it's a Helminth ability, right? You have Pulverize and you have Regurgitate. So while Grendel might be, for some people, higher tier, for some people, lower tier, I would definitely put him in like a B tier these days, right? Well, if you like his kit, I would say you could easily put him A tier, maybe even S tier if you really love him. 
but I would throw him B tier. I think his kit's fun to play here and there, but he's more of a gimmicky type frame for sure. So you need to love his gimmick in order to play him, because if you do not like doing the ball shenanigans, and if you do not like being a ball, it's just, it's just all fucked, my dudes. It's just all fucked. So you need to like his kit to play him, or else I just think he's kind of goofy. But you can technically always helmet out anything, so it's up to you. But I think he's pretty solidly parked in B tier. Next up on the list is Gyre, Electrical Crit Extraordinaire. So you definitely have to like her kit or just like AoE Electricity in order to play her. I mean, it's like any frame. Her general kit is electricity throwing around, which increases your crit and does more damage. Her overall kit is really strong. She is a crit frame. If you're looking for a crit frame, that is her bread and butter. But like, that's the thing. That is the only thing she does. She is crit and she is electricity. So she's not a very versatile, she's a very simple, but very strong Warframe, especially with all the AOE and stuff you have and uh, all the good buffs now you have to crit so you can just spread your damage around even more. I would vote her probably, uh, she could be anywhere B plus. I would vote her for A right now, just with how strong general stuns and crit damage goes, right? You don't have to take a ton of damage. You just run around, throw your yeets out. She does have CC as well if you need that. So it, you know, it's convenient there. Damage is good. Crit is good. And she has strong AOE. So you know what? She's just nice like that. I think any Warframe is pretty survivable in this current era of shield gating and this current era of just invulnerability timers. So honestly, for most Warframes, I don't even consider that a factor these days. But if you do, she doesn't have the most defensible kit outside of the crit stuns and CC, right? So, you know, maybe get tripped up here and there, but you can just mod for that. You can just arcane for that. You can just do anything for that. So insanely strong, really love her. And since she's a high shield frame, you can shield gate that way. So yeah, think about it. You spam abilities a lot, so it's probably worth it. Now we have Harrow. Oh, such a spooky frame. So Harrow has always been a good, strong, very specifically headshot and support crit frame. That's at least how I view it. A lot of his kits based around just hitting enemies and critting them, okay? You get a lot of shield, so it's not really a huge issue of survivability. And he's he's so spooky, like rap, tap, tap. Rap, tap, tap. Right, it's just very beautiful. You do have to like his kit, because his kit is a pretty active, like used kit. So you are gonna be using it between a lot of your abilities, right? Look at that headshot multiplier at level rank one. Like, that's insane. So I'm gonna say Harrow is definitely a goddamn A tier frame. S tier if you really like playing him. He's just a good frame, okay? Good general support, good general damage, but you do have to like using abilities a lot more because your active abilities are gonna have to be used more. So you'll probably still wanna throw on duration, but yeah, I'm gonna throw him A tier. Good survivability, good damage. Just gotta shoot heads. If you can't shoot heads, not worth playing probably to be honest but you gotta shoot heads. Next up, we have is Hildren Hildren Prime. So she is the shield mommy. Think of her like shield rhino in Warframe. All of her abilities are essentially shield based. Her one ability drains shield and does damage. She has a really high invulnerability uh, shield gate. So she, <laughs> shocking, right? The Warframe with only shield has a really high shield gate and she can just drain shield and get all the shield Oh, and then you just, I always slam around. But I still think her kit overall could be a lot stronger. There's a lot of things now that build off of shield. So she has been augmented a ton based on more arcanes and more mods coming out in recent years that have made her general kit a lot better. Because back in the day, I think people considered her a garbage tier, bad, awful Warframe. But if you like her, you like her. Nowadays, it's like, hey, she's pretty good. She's, you know, pretty good to your Warframe. But you really have to like her shield kit. So I myself, okay, I'm gonna throw her in C tier. I don't think she's bad. I just don't think I like her. And you really have to like her kit, right? So I don't like her kit at all. I don't like her shield shenanigans kit. 
and I don't like her exalted type weapon. It's not like, is it? Yeah, I think it's a true exalted weapon, the Balefire. So while she's pretty cool, eh, you really do have to like her kit. So she's strong at survivability. I just, eh, I'd use any other Warframe usually over her myself. I just don't care about her, so I'm throwing her pretty solidly in C tier. But again, there's a lot of side things like Arcanes that have released that have made her as a Warframe stronger. But again, you still gotta like her kit. Now, Hydroid has been updated, reworked, and has been made stronger. Look at those tentacle corrosives. Look at that. Oh, so much corrosive. Look at this tidal surge. Still pretty shitty. And then you look at Tempest Barrage. Oh, not bad. So, your boy has been 100 percent increased and made stronger via his rework. A lot of people like using Hydroid now, and it makes sense. He has good corrosive statuses, his third ability is actually nice now, and it does a lot of buffing and damage to enemies, so... It's a, uh, it works well, man, what can I say? So I think he's a lot better. I think he's a lot nicer. I just don't play him enough yet, so I would throw him myself in B tier. He's probably pretty solidly A tier for a lot of people, but for me, he's a B tier frame right now. I need more time with him to really know if I like him more, but you know, he's B tier and corrosive just adds a lot. So he's playable for anything. I'd say generally in my case, I'd say anything B and up is a Warframe that I'll play casually here and there. I stick to usually Warframes in my A or S tier, depending on what type of content I would play, but there's so many Warframes that I just don't play all like 40 to 50 to 60, no, there's like 55 frames. With Primes, there's like 80, but I just don't play all of them. There's just too many, so just think of it like that, right? Now we have Inaros. So Inaros is another frame, which is just a straight up tank where his abilities are kind of whatever and you just don't even care to use them half the time. You throw on your first ability, right? Get that hardened armor, some uh, good healing kind of. Your Sandstorm might just get in the way, so you don't bother using that. Your Devour just wastes time, so you don't bother using that. Your first ability is actually somewhat usable, though. Oh, He's a really boring Warframe, straight up just a health tank, with no good ally buffs or anything like that. He is a Warframe that you really have to like. I'm throwing your boy, as always, in D tier. He's like... He's the same as Atlas, man. They're just kind of shitty, weird, annoying. He's usable, like, very casually as a health tank, so fuck it, you can throw him higher if you want to, but, like, goddamn, Inaris' kit's just so boring. I like throwing him on when I just want a health tank and not pay attention, but if you do higher level stuff, uh, yeah, you probably don't want to use him too much. <laughs> Either way, I'm gonna throw him D tier just based on how he... His general kit is just so lame, so boring, and just oh. oh boy, now we have Ivara, Ivara Prime. I only use Ivara for like uh, stealth and conservation. She is a hunter frame, so it makes sense. But overall, goddamn, do I hate her kit. She has her bubble radius shots, her quiver, right? Ah, oh, cool, so you have different arrows that do different things. Like, they're not terrible or anything, but they could be better. Your second ability is absolutely terrible because, like, look at that. You have to just take a guided arrow around. Like, what the hell? No, Navigator's pretty boring. Even Prowl, I think, is pretty boring and whatever. And then your Artemis bow. I hate bows. I'm not a huge bow user. It's pretty strong and good overall if you like it, but, like, I do not care for it at all. So this one, I would throw Ivara in D tier. Probably like for most people, she's B tier. But for me, she's D tier. Like I just straight up hate her kit. I fucking hate it. I don't give a shit about it. Even like her using her for conservation half the time, I'm just flying around in my arc wing. So I don't even bother using her. So I, I, don't, I don't like her, my chat. I don't like her at all. If you like her, so I'm so sorry, but I fucking hate Avara. Foit me, 1v1 me, okay, in the Ring of Chaos, but I don't like Avara. It is what it is. Next up is Korra. So she is AoE cat mom loot frame, if you will. She has a pretty good, strong overall kit, I would say, but it is more of a stationary kit. So it's less versatile like that for a lot of people. You have your whip claw, which is kind of an exalted weapon setup. So you want to have a strong melee for that. See, stats are boosted by equip melee whip. So it's yeah, it's pretty cool. She has an exalted-esque weapon, a stat stick weapon, I should say. Sorry, not exalted, pseudo exalted, stat stick weapon, pseudo exalted. Her ensnare is pretty cool, but I mean like meh, could be better. Her venari is a very cool 
very awesome kitty cat, right? Like, it's a cool kitty cat. And her fourth ability is a nice just AoE snare. A lot of good augments overall. I don't think she's, like, godly or anything. I think she's pretty playably cool. And her ability to get more loot is also very strong and very nice. But, meh. She's not the most fun. I just usually end up using Gara over Korra for defense missions as well, because I hate that you can't move around with her kid as much. So for me, I'm going to throw her probably in B tier. B tier, again, is where I'll park most of my, like, eh, frames that I like, but I don't like too much, and I don't think they're too godly. So I think she's pretty solidly in B tier. Loot is nice. Damage is nice, but... Eh, I don't like running around just whip clawing or whip clawing my cage too much, so her like second and third ability are kind of like whatever boring useless in my mind. Not useless, but like boringly useless, yeah. So yeah, that's where I throw her. Cool, 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 cool. Next we have Krulavo, the emo as hell overguard stabby warframe. I've played Krulavo a good chunk. His uh, heavy attack builds with passives are definitely strong because of how that works. And I think overall his kit works well. Like it is a strong, good kit. You do your sweet slashes, your damage redirection, and he's just a nicer, newer warframe. The thing is like his kit works well and luckily it all meshes well together. But, you know, you really gotta spam a lot of abilities here and there. His fourth is a stationary ability. Eh, it's nice. I like it. I just don't care for him overall a ton. And I know that's controversial because he's so good and people love him a lot. But, eh, I'm gonna throw him right now in B tier. He can pretty solidly go A or even maybe S tier if you really love him. I just don't like him enough, man. I don't care about the biggest overguard. Steinax works a little better for just casual overguarding if you want to use your abilities like that. It really depends what you're looking for out of your Warframes, though. But he is really strong. If you want heavy attack builds, I almost never use them. He's also good, right? It's just, eh, I like his kit. Just not enough for me to care or to rate him higher. But he's probably B or S for a lot of people, so keep that in mind. Ooh, next we have is Long. Lavos. So Lavos is a very interesting Warframe. He doesn't use energy. Instead, you just cast your abilities. You hold it to augment your abilities with certain elements on the uh, elemental chart. So he can hit any element and he doesn't use abilities, only has cooldowns. Really strong overall Warframe because of that. And a lot of his kit is like good AoE based. So it's nice like that. But it's boring as fuck. I don't like it a ton, and I don't like all the time holding your skills together to have to choose, like, which elemental combos you want. It's not that it's hard, it's just annoying having to, like, be like, hold this, hold that, and then I can hit my skill. Hold this, hold that, then I can hit my skill. Hold this, now I can hit my skill. The cooldown setup and no energy is nice on him, but I'm probably gonna throw him, like, pretty solidly in B tier, okay? He's probably, again, like, A and S tier for a lot of people because of the sheer amount of elements, is like, all of the augment mods that exist and everything like that. I don't even remember any of his shit because I don't care about him. <laughs> but a lot of people love him, would put him pretty solidly A tier, so keep that in mind. He's just not my type of frame, right? And while his kit is cool and strong, I remember playing it a lot on release and then I got so bored, so not my type of frame. Okay, now we have Limbo. So Limbo is the trolliest Warframe because of how his abilities work. He essentially ha works on two planes of reality. You have Limbo and then like regular, and then you have Limbo Rift, mo vode, uh, no, Rift Void Mode, ah, call it what you will. So you have to, if you go into Rift Mode, you can't t be damaged, but you also can't damage enemies. And if you're in normal mode, then you can damage enemies and they can't damage you. So you have to go into Rift Mode, but then you have abilities to turn enemies into Rift Mode. The only thing I like using him for is good AOE defense when I'm lazy. He is such a troll weird Warframe and can just be such a pain in the ass for so many people, especially in a public lobby. So in general, I'd put him as like a D tier frame. I'd put him as low as possible. He's usable in like defense missions and more stationary missions, but you really have to like his kit. Like, oh dear God, you need to love Limbo's kit in order to want to play Limbo, or you need to be lazy like me and like what, you're doing some sort of defense? Yeah, like, I don't know. You don't even want to use him in defense because it'll just make the mission take longer. Maybe a survival just to mess around. I just don't like his kit. It's so annoying. I'm just gonna shit on him all day. Fuck Limbo. 
Oh, next up we have Loki. He's a he's a little invis frame, a little trolley frame. I will solidly say, I'll be the first to say this. I don't like Loki. I think his kit's boring, but I mean, I like using him for just lazy invisibility as well. He's not bad or anything. It's nice having like radial disarm, good AoEs and good augment mods. It's just his base kit is just kind of whatever, boring and lame to me. And it's definitely an early Warframe, like obviously an early Warframe. You see Warframes like Dagath and like they have so many lines of text and information. And then you see Warframes like Loki and it's just like decoy. Invisibility. He teleports with an enemy. AoE disarms the enemy so they can't shoot. Like, his kit's not bad, and he's a lot better later on. I just don't like him, and I only use him for his stealth shenanigans half the time. But he's really good once you get augment mods, and if you like building him like that. But, I don't care. I will solidly place your boy in C tier. He's not a favorite frame of mine. He is not one I care for, and I don't like his kit. So, there you go, Loki. But if you like his kit, there's nothing wrong with that, chat. Reminder, play any Warframe you want, it doesn't matter. Next up is Mag, a pretty cool, I think general like CC type magnetism uh, armor shred, cool frame overall. She is also an early Warframe, but there's a lot more you can do with her kit in general, casually if you just wanna CC and do damage. So it's a good kit, I think, and at this point, I think people have warmed up to her more. Sometimes people just shit on her, other times people are like, no, she's really good. So a lot of people are really hit or miss on Mag. I think as an overall frame, she's good, she's strong, and she has a good kit. You can get some good augment mods. Some of her other abilities like pull just out of the default is just dog shit worthless and lame. Sometimes. But it can also be good. I just don't like it. So, eh, I'm gonna put her solidly again in, I think, B tier. I don't play her much. I don't care for her kit a ton, but it's pretty good. And if you like her, that's, you know, that's good. She is very usably nice and she has a good chill, calm, easy to understand kit. So yeah, I think she's pretty good now. Next up, we have Mesa. So I'm not a huge Mesa player, but what her kit generally revolves around is you being a sharpshooter, you getting good damage buffs, you having little uh, DR type uh, don't die buffs. And she is overall a really nice Warframe. Pistols have been buffed a ton, so her exalted pistols are better. And she just has a nice, snipey, easy to use kit. I think she's insanely good now. Pistols have been buffed a ton via Arcanes to make her so much better. Oh my God, my dog's going crazy again. So overall, I would say she's probably pretty solidly high tier for a ton of people. I'm gonna put her myself in A tier. A lot of people would put her S tier. I just don't use her or play her enough to put her in S tier, but she's fucking amazing. You have good augment mods. You just are an auto turret. It's like you're using Protea's second ability, but it's just Mesa. So I would put her pretty solidly in A tier right now. Okay, now Mirage and Mirage Prime. So. Mirage is also a really strong and decent Warframe just by default of her kit. Multiplies herself, does hella good damage, you can do weird sleight of hand explosive builds, Eclipse is just awesome, right? You have a blind too, like she has so much just stuff and then you get augment mods and she's even better. Can you imagine that, right? Oh, augment mods make people better. So she's an insanely strong, just general Warframe to play as well. She's very similar to Mesa in that regard. Like you can take her anywhere and just eat this shit out of people. So I don't play her a ton at all or anything, but she's really good and her damage is really high tier. So I'm gonna put her as A as well. She could probably be S tier for a lot of people too. Hey, it really depends. But this tier list, like with everything, is all over the place. So don't worry about it. A tier Mesa, yeah. Like I could probably lower Ember because I don't play her as much, but you know, it's fine. After Mirage, we have Necros. So Necros is very simply a spooker, scary, ooh, scary skeletons. Spooky, scary skeletons, undead, Warframe. He has some cool abilities like Terrify, right? You got an armor shred. Awesome. Your fourth ability um, exists. So yeah, his kit just kind of isn't great and is nothing amazing. His cooler stuff is probably just Desecrate because you get a ton of loot. So that's what people usually use him for. Not a ton more. And he's just kind of been consigned to being loot bitch frame. So he's not the highest tier warframe for a lot of people. I'll put him 
as a C tier, because even though he's kind of annoyingly whatever, blah, people don't like him, being a loot frame is still good, and getting a ton of loot is still good, so I'll still throw him C, even though his kit's like, blah, disgusting. Now we have Neja, Neja Prime. Neja's a really good frame. I think you can get Neja from the clan. He is overall, right? It's, it's a he? Yeah, he overall is nice. You have good DR type invulnerability type stuff. Is it damage reduction or just straight up a shield? You have good AoE. You have good damage boosting? No, damage vulnerability. Yeah, you have just good damage. Oh yeah, his third one is the... It works similar to Rhino Shield. It builds up damage, absorbs damage, and then you have a little invulnerability shield. So good in survivability, good damage overall. Yeah, it's a pretty cool frame. Once you get more, I should say, more augment mods, also very strong. So I'm not the biggest Nijja player. Nijja is really good early game. So I would say probably these days A tier Nijja. Still very strong. Could throw, or sorry, B tier. Could throw it in A tier if you want, but. Depends on how much you like using the frame. Still would use though. I was a very casual user of Nijah a lot more early on, like more mid game, but stopped more so after. Okay, now we have your boy Nidus, the infested Warframe. You got you got little maggots, dude. You got good CC. You have health. You have no shield though. You have health and vulnerability. Nidus is a very specific playstyle type of kit, and you definitely have to use a lot of Nidus abilities in order to build up your invulnerability, uh, like your plague, whatever it's called, and all of your stacks. Once you build up more stacks, you'll do a lot of damage, and you'll just annihilate people. So, Nidus is one of those frames that, again, you have to use so much of the kit that you really have to like using his kit. So, strong frame, good stuff overall, a lot of damage, and you just have to stack your stuff up, but you can be both invincible and do a ton of damage. So, I mean, yeah, it's not that bad. I would only still throw Nidus in B tier, just because, like, goddamn, is it annoying stacking and spamming out so many of his abilities sometimes that I'm just like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm out. I don't want to play Nidus. I don't want to spam his abilities and build them up as much anymore. So, yeah, Nidus is B tier for me. Cool frame, though. Next up, we have Nova Prime, Nova, you know, whichever. Nova's an interesting Warframe. Has good overall abilities, some, you know, damage reduction, some health stacking. You can make enemies go really slow, or you can make enemies go really fast. The thing is, I just kind of don't like Nova's overall kit. The only thing I will ever use her for is Speed Nova, just so that I can get enemies to run at me faster, and even then, I don't really care to use Nova, because I just rather use other frames that I like. So I'm going to put Nova over in C tier. You definitely have to like her in order to throw her higher. But she has a lot of uses, depending on how you feel like building her. Augment mods, good, all that jazz. I just don't give a shit about her. So yeah, needed to three tier, uh, C tier for Nova. Now we have Nyx, Nyx Prime. Nyx is like what, a uh, mind bending type? That's technically how she's kind of described. She's a mental attack Warframe. Oh God, I think her kit is just so out of date and boring. Obviously augment mods make her a lot better and stronger if you like it, but oh dear God, her kit sucks, man. It's just like, it's just so fucking bad, dude. Let's just never use her and just agree that we hate her. I hate her, okay? Personal vendetta against Nyx. If you like her, I'm sorry, because I don't. So I would throw her, she's a D tier frame for me. Her kit's so lame, so boring. I just never liked it. Never once in my life have I thought, yeah, I'm gonna play Nyx. So rip on her. Ah yes, we have Oberon. Oberon is the Paladin Warframe. His kit's like overall usable, it's just boring now, right? You have better Warframes for, than Oberon for literally like everything else, but he's still usable, right? He has a cool buff armor heal ability, so that's nice. He has a cool overall AoE radiation pool, which is cool, but you know, got better stuff for that. You have a Smite, you know, you got Reckoning, which has a armor reduction, which is nice. It's just such a long cast time, so he's another case of like, he's good and he's pretty playable. It's just every other Warframe does stuff better than he does, so he's, he's just a C-tier Warframe. Like, he's playable, he's nice, and he's chill. There's just so many other Warframes that do his job way better than him. It is what it is. Oh dear god, you have Octavia. Octavia is such a broken Warframe, but she's the most boring Warframe. 
The general idea is you yeet down all of her abilities, you de get insane buffs via her abilities, you stay invisible, and you just watch as your little, like, mallet runs around with the buffs on it, killing everything. Man, she's such a weird frame like that. Once in a while, I'll play her just to murder everything, but she is the most boring Warframe there is. So I'm gonna throw her S tier. S tier purely because she's the most AFK, lazy, easy, murder everyone Warframe in the game. But I mean, she's like D tier playability fun. So it's a weird one, but I'll throw her S tier. Purely because she's zero effort annihilation on the enemies. So good for you, Octavia. Ooh, next we have is Protea, and soon enough we will have Protea Prime in 2024. She is, uh, what I would say my main Warframe, and I love playing her a ton. She has a lot of general versatility and usability, both for damage and support, and I hate her fourth ability, a lot of people hate her fourth ability, so that's the one they tend to helminth off as well. Her base kit's nice and strong, but it gets so much better when you take off that fourth ability. So she has like shield and slash damage balls, she has a heat turret that uh, builds up damage a lot, and she has good general support with her dispenser with health, energy, and that's right, ammunition. So if you use a high explosive build, or sorry, a high usage explosive weapon with maybe not a lot of ammo, hey, it helps. Her passive's nice too, because every fourth ability is buffed with 100% power strength. So I like her, I love her. She is my favorite ability, or Warframe. She is the engineer. I love using her turrets to snipe everyone down and her grenade fan to kill everyone. So for me, she is without a doubt, always and forever S tier. For other people, maybe A tier, maybe B tier, but she will forever be an S tier for me. So Protea, hype, hype, hype. Okay, now everybody, we have Corvex, a new tank radiation based Warframe built like an actual brick shithouse, or I guess in this case, a stone shithouse. Cool general abilities, passive, you have good radiation, AoE damage, slows, damage vulnerabilities to enemies. I don't like his wall a ton, but it works pretty well. His third ability is nice, because it's just no status essentially is gonna hit you, you're good to go. And his fourth ability, uh, combined with his first ability is nice. You get a lot of AoE, you get a lot of explosion, and you can also helminth on a CC type ability to make his fourth and first ability work a lot better together. Cause you know, his base kit is hit first ability, and then you hit it with your fourth ability, more damage, the more enemies are around, so. Yeah, he's a pretty good tanky Warframe, pretty strong overall, but it's, I feel like his kit's not that unique or special or anything like that. It's just like, hey, it's another tank frame, but with radiation this time. So you can always like with any Warframe, build him to be a god, but I would still probably put him at B tier right now for me. Like I don't like his kit overall, it's boring and it could be a lot nicer, but I, I usually don't like stagnant, like stay in one spot frames a ton. But you'll still do damage and you'll still tank well. So he's still 100% strong, usable. Ah yes, Revenant, everyone's favorite lazy tank boy. So Revenant, everyone loves him as a lazy tank because his third ability, or sorry, not his third, his second ability, Mesmer Skin, is just straight up, hey, don't take damage. Just don't. You want, you want to take damage? Nope. And he has overall a good kit, but it's mainly in his third, or sorry, his second ability for Mesmer skin. He could be a lot more fun, but that's how it is. You also have Reeve, which leeches stuff, so it's, he's just through and through a tank frame, no matter how you look at it. You enthrall enemies and essentially just make more tank targets. I am going to throw him at B tier, okay? No, 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 hear me out. He's an S tier tank because he just doesn't die, okay? S tier tank without a doubt. But his overall kit is fucking boring and lame. So he's very similar to Anaros, except he's just better than Anaro. So you know what, no, we'll throw him A tier because he's that good of a tank. I don't wanna throw him in S tier though, because all of his other abilities are pretty boring and lame, even with like augment mods, yeah. So he's only, for a lot of people, a Mesmer skin slave, and that is kinda lame. But he is a very good god tier tank. So it is what it is. Let me know what you think on that, but hey, hey. If you like his kit other than his um, Reeve, or sorry, Mesmer skin, you do you, but hey. Now we have Rhino, oh baby. Rhino is a great early to mid game type Warframe. He has buffs, he has tankiness, he has stun type abilities, 
right? He has an overall good kit, but it's like, it could be better. You could have better ones now, and he has definitely fallen off a lot for me in general. So, Rhino is going to be a fun one. I'm ranking Rhino C tier. He's a Warframe I would recommend everyone in mid to early game try out, play around with, especially if you're having troubles. He's easy and he's strong, he just falls off later game, and there's better Warframes you can use over Rhino, like I'd rather use Revenant over Rhino, I'd rather use like Corvex over Rhino. He's just a tank that does his job well, but later on in the game when you get more Warframes, he kind of loses his relevancy because there's so many other Warframes in the game now, and a lot more are a lot more fun and a lot more can just do his job better than him because he's kind of he has like the exact same kit pretty much as Nija but worse and yeah that's just kind of how I would describe him at this point he's good if you like him and he's very strong early to mid game he just falls off because there's other frames that do his job better than him IMO oof now we have Saren so Saren is still a beloved Warframe for a lot of people she has Toxin she has uh, what is it viral and corrosive depending on what sort of setups you're going on so she is insanely strong she has every variant of toxin corrosive viral every toxin type element that matters she is hitting that so she's still really strong a lot of warframe updates have hit more with like arcanes that make her even better so honestly let's just yeet her on to s tier she has a similar kit to ember in the sense that you're just you're hitting everyone you're just doing large aoe and killing everyone it's the same sort of idea there except she's murking everyone more with corrosive and ember, ember's murking everyone more with fire or sorry toxin type corrosive viral they're both great she's really strong love it good shield gating good murder ah that's all i really have to say i don't play her a ton but i just think she's s tier for casual murder for everything so yay good for her Ooh, now we have Sevagoth. So I'm not a huge Sevagoth player. You essentially have Sevagoth and you have Sevagoth's Shadow. So you have two general skill sets to play with. Sevagoth himself has a good strong kit. Damage debuffs enemies, right? You can, I think these slow enemies, especially with Gloom. So itself is maybe the one that you care about less, but it deals percent health as radial damage. So, hey, I'm not a huge Sevagoth player though. Once you get into using his Exalted Shadow, I like his Exalted Shadow more than like base Sevagoth, because Exalted Shadow is a cool Exalted melee type Warframe, essentially. He has Exalted Claws, and I like melee frames, so he works as a melee frame. He has good CC, and you just run around meleeing everyone. And Gloom is, of course, Sevagoth's helmet ability. Everyone loves it. It's broken as shit. I would probably put Sevagoth solidly in A tier for me, as a general Warframe. I don't play him a ton, but when I do, I enjoy playing him, and his kit overall in Gloom is just really good for general Warframe gameplay. You might put him lower tier like B if you don't like him as much, or you might put him in S tier if you're the type of player that always uses Gloom, really loves Gloom, and think like Gloom is God's gift to mankind. So I'll put him solidly at A tier. I think he's a strong, nice Warframe. I just don't play Sevagoth as much as I could these days especially compared to other Warframes. And he does take a lot of formas to work, but I mean, this is Warframe. You have 50 plus Warframes. Everything takes a lot of forma, so I don't really think that matters. Next up, we have Styanax. Styanax, also a really strong new frame. No shock there. We have cool little explosive javelin, which is probably one of his weaker abilities, but oh well. It's cool CC. You have good armor uh, defense reduction, armor shred in one foul swoop. You have a good ability here for shield, and you have amazing overguard and everything, right? Stanax crit chance increase with shield and doubles for spear guns. So he has overall a good kit, okay? He has a good kit. But, you know, you gotta like using his kit a ton. I don't care a lot for his kit. A lot of people are using him right now for fun in the Ethervo General Fragmented One boss fight for his general overguard. I think you might need... Is it... You need to get a Augment mod on him to get Overguard, because, like, by default he doesn't, or you have to throw on, like, some sort of a mod or something. But I'm not a huge Steinax player. I don't care for his kit too much, for me, he's a B tier frame, right? He has armor reduction, cool. He has overguard and he has some like nice buffs, but I don't like spamming out javelins. I don't really care for his Axios javelin. It's not like the 
best, but it's not the worst. Like it's good CC, don't get me wrong. I just don't care to use it a ton. Like 50, 50 meter range CC is pretty good, right? Yeah. Anyways, I'd throw him B. You can probably throw him pretty solidly in A tier. And if a lot of people, if you really love him, you love his like overguard kit, yeah, you might even throw him in S tier. But he's more of a B tier frame for me. His kit is really strong though. So I would recommend a lot of people, if you have the chance, look at it, look at like gameplay of him and decide if you do like his kit. And then maybe you'd rate him a lot higher. Next up, we have Titania. Everyone's favorite Titania. So she is a fast fairy small gun in frame. She has exalted guns when she goes flying razor wing mode and she has overall a good kit. Not a huge uh, Titania player. I don't really care for her kit a lot, but she very well flies around the map, very well kills people, but she has a very specific Arcwing style kit. So for me, because of that Arcwing style kit, I legit throw her in C tier. A lot of people might throw her in, in straight up eight or S tier, but like, I do not like her kit. I do not like Arcwing kit, but her abilities and everything is strong. I only build her for speed and so I can get around the map fast, but she's more of like a meme for me. So she's more of a meme frame for me. Okay, now we have Trinity Prime. So back in the day, Trinity Prime was like amazing godly Warframe. She has great energy regen. She has amazing health regen. You can build that for some, look at that damage reduction there, right? You have possible EV builds, right? Where you can just AOE nuke maps. So she is really strong and she is really nice overall. If you like her kit, if you like building her kit at all. I don't care about her whatsoever. I like using any other Warframe over her at this point. Her kit's just boring and it's outdated. Other Warframes have nice kits that are more usably fun than hers, IMO, but I still think she's pretty strong. I'm just gonna throw her as well, similar to Titania, in C tier. You could still probably throw her A, B, or even S tier, to be honest, but I'm throwing her in C tier. I don't care for her kit. I don't care for EV, AOE, nuke builds. I just don't like her really at all but she is a strong warframe if you like building up for her it's just in warframe half the time i don't care to build a energy regen specific health regen specific frame or like specific nuke frame so i don't care for her but she's still pretty cool oh yes next up is valkyr we have valkyrie so she's a nice melee based frame really cool exalted melee her Hysteria, I think she's essentially invulnerable when she's using her uh, setup with her Exalted Claws. You have Nice Paralysis, good damage increase. You have Warcry, again, good damage and armor buffs increase, right? Ripline, which is useless overall, but whatever. Like, I think you need augments on that. Even then, I don't care about Ripline, so it's probably the thing you're gonna Helminth off. Valkyr is a really cool melee-based frame where you just attack fast as fuck. Especially now with the new auto melee and Tenokai, probably wrecks her up or like reaps her up even more, reap and sow and everything, just like your boy Sevagoth. So, eh, screw it. I'll throw her in A tier these days. She's just a fun melee frame to play if you just want to go like ape shit on everyone and cut them up with your Valkyrie claws. She's, just, she's fun. I like her overall if I want to do a good berserker melee frame. So, yeah, casual A tier for her. Next up is Vobin Prime. So Vobin Prime, Vobin, whatever, is generally a CC frame, but I like his kit overall. You have law, uh, sorry, you have good status with the Telos Nervos, but I don't really care for it that much. I more so like his mine layer, mine, mine layer, mine layer. I like the, all the different general buffs and damages that his second ability hits off with. Photon Strike, I don't care for at all, but hey, it's a cool like general ability visually. But Bastille, mwah, Bastille is fucking awesome. So this is a really great CC AOE type ability, debuffs as well. All in all, 10 out of 10 would recommend. But I feel like CC is less cool now in Warframe. People don't like CC as much. And I don't play a ton of CC frames as well because CC in Warframe can be very casually just like sit there and CC them in one spot and just shoot. So it can get kind of boring. So he's a still a really good frame, really nice. You could throw him higher, you could throw him lower, but I'm gonna throw Vobin in B tier. He's probably S tier purely if you're looking at CC though, if that's what you like. So eh, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Oh boy, now we have Volt slash Volt Prime. Very good Warframe and a lot of people's favorite. So here's how he generally works. Speed, you like speed and you like electricity? 
Volt is for you. You can get good buffs on your first, it's an electric, but you can throw on augment mods, you know, stuff like that. Speed is speed, damage buff and electricity and speed, and then fourth is just AoE CC. So, for Volt, I'm gonna throw him in A tier, whereas I threw Gauss in S tier. I just think Gauss's general kit is a better type, like it's Volt's kit, but a little better casually. And they both have their good uses. I think generally Volt can stack up damage a bit more than Gauss, but Gauss has a bunch of different stacks. And yeah, you know, eh, you might wanna just Helminth off Volt's fourth ability to stack even more damage or maybe another buff, but they're both very similar Warframes. And it's just, if Gauss is A tier, Volt's, uh, B tier, you know, it's like I'm putting one no matter what over the other because they're kind of the same Warframe, kind of. A little bit, but a little bit not. So, yeah, we'll throw Volt in A tier. Still a great frame, still love to use him. Okay, Varuna. Varuna's a somewhat newer frame as well. She has a very specific type of playstyle, though. So you do need to like, I guess, being a little lichen type dog animal going around and killing everything in order to use a lot of your abilities. I think her abilities are nice, they're cool, and they're strong. You just kind of run around being an assassin, jumping around in dog mode, staying invisible. But her kit could be better, you know? Like, it's decent. It just could be a lot better. I'm throwing her in B tier. You really do have to like her kit. A lot of it's based on, like, hit your first ability, go invisible, and then stack all of your other skills properly. And if you want to melee, like, pop out of that. She's strong, she's nice, but I'd still throw her B tier. Oh baby, we have Wisp. So Wisp is irrefutably so many people's favorite frames. So many people love simping over Wisp, Wisp Prime. She's casually really nice at buff and damage, buff and health. She has good damage multipliers, and she has good general radiation if you want that, but you don't really need want a uh, need or might not want that so you can swap that out as well she is goddamn amazing everyone's or at least a ton of people's favorite support frame because of how easy and strong her general kit is i'm gonna throw your girl wisp like always on s tier because of that she's just strong she's very good like that and dear god can you start up in everything with the Helminth anyways. And yeah, people love her ass, you know? People just love Warframe rule 34, insane amounts. Next up is Wukong. So Wukong actually like kinda got nerfed because they had an AI nerf to Wukong. What his first ability does, clones him and it makes an AI Wukong for you. But that Wukong now like uses ammo and it has its AIs nerfed. So it's actually a little shittier compared to how it used to be. Wukong is an incredibly strong Warframe, has good like run around, good health regen, has invulnerability type damage multiplier, armor buffs, and has an exalted weapon if you so choose to use it, but it's not the strongest exalted weapon. Wukong is still a really strong frame for early mid game and can do really any mission in the game easily. So I'm throwing him still A tier. Any Warframe that straight up has a built-in Spectre probably deserves damn near A to S tier, but hey, you can still build him very easily. He's a very strong Warframe and he's, he's just good, okay? It's just the slight nerf to him made him slightly worse, but you can just build around it without much of an issue. So yeah, he's still a really strong Warframe, casually in the game and forever and always. Next up is Zaku. So I'm not a huge Zaku player, okay? But Zaku is still very strong overall. First ability is just void damage, right? Like you can't be mad at just void damage increase. Second ability is similar to Protea, but different. He grabs weapons from enemies, or sorry, Zaku, they grab weapons from enemies, right? Cause Zaku is like three people, three Warframes, kind of amalgamated into one. So Zaku is Zaku. <laughs> so Zaku grabs the Loke, grabs guns from all the enemies and just shoots it. So you get your own void auto turret. It's great and it's awesome. The third ability of Zaku has a lot of separate uses. Defense re uh, reduction, like the general DR is probably your most beneficial one and yeah, depending on what you're going with. And your fourth ability is really nice because it has 75% dodge chance but it makes you like kind of vulnerable. Cause look at you, you go to your void skeleton. But the thing about his fourth ability is 
the thing about Zaku, sorry, fourth ability is that Zaku's fourth ability stops the cooldown on your other abilities. So you only have to recast your fourth ability. You do not have to recast your second or your first ability that much. So 10 out of 10 would Zaku again. Other people probably definitely have better builds for Zaku, but yeah, my build for Zaku could be a lot better, but I would still put Zaku as an A tier. They're just a really strong Warframe with a really nice kit and with the added dodge chance, throw on Rolling Guard or something, you're good to go. So 10 out of 10 would Zaku again, probably. Next up is Ureli. Ureli is a Warframe of all Warframes, okay? Let's put it this way. Ureli is the K-Drive Warframe and they made her passive dependent on using your secondary weapon and honestly, it's not terrible. It's just, it could be better. Her general kit is strong. Her first ability is good. Her second ability isn't good, but it has good DR. Her third ability is nice because it's slash and her fourth ability is actually really good CC and damage if you catch enough people. But she is a K-Drive Warframe and that is a sin we cannot allow going through. So she is a D tier Warframe for me. Ureli is actually a really good Warframe skills wise, so realistically, she's probably A tier, but because her kit is very K-Drive reliant and her passive is like, hey, you know, use your secondary for a bunch of crit. Fuck it, we're throwing her on D tier. We're hating K-Drive, we are K-Drive haters. I've gotten all of the K-Drive, I just don't think K-Drive is a fun, good mechanic on a Warframe because it's so floaty and hard to, I guess, move around compared to a Warframe in the general Warframe tile sets. If you're in an open world though, she is an A tier for me. <laughs> but outside of open worlds, she's kind of more D tier, okay? I'm definitely only memeing on Ureli, so don't take it too seriously, okay? And last but not least, we have Zephyr, Zephyr Prime. Uh, I always think Zephyr's a guy for some reason, but no, she is a girl Warframe. I don't know why, but my brain is just Zephyr guy. I don't know. So she is a really strong Warframe. Like, no joke, she's actually insanely good. She has good CC off her first ability. She has a weird crit chance while airborne passive, which makes her damage insanely strong. Like, no joke, it's amazing. Or no, not Tailwind, sorry. Your second ability is the good CC. I get it, I got them confused, my bad, my bad. Her first ability is literally Yeet and Fly, okay? Her third ability is, you have a windshield around you, so enemies can't shoot you. So as long as you don't get that close to enemies, you're not gonna take damage, which pairs really well, because if you hold her first ability, you fly in the air and just stay airborne at a slow drain per second energy-wise, so you wanna have efficiency. And her last ability is an insanely strong tornado that either moves around collecting enemies or you can make it stationary, and it just CCs people into it. You shoot the tornadoes and the tornadoes do damage to the enemies around them and it like spreads status as well. Her kit, for a lot of people, even though she's an early Warframe, might be boring, but she's so fucking good and does an insane amount of just general CC damage just flying around. So I will throw Zephyr in A tier because I actually like playing her a lot. She's pretty fun and I like my general casual build for her. So this everyone is the tier list today. Again, like I said at the start of a video, tier lists are more for fun. They don't matter in the grand scheme of things, but they're for fun. If you like a Warframe, they generally are higher, and if you hate a Warframe, they're generally lower. I tier list just for playing the game and general usability and how much I like a Warframe. If you're taking this tier list too seriously, you may need to go walk outside, touch grass, and fuck off, but if you understand that tier lists are more for fun, they're more biased, like what Warframes you like, because any Warframe in Warframe is usable at a pretty high degree. So yeah, it's just for fun. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. And if you didn't, lol, get wrecked, cry more or something. So yeah, like, sub, rate, subscribe. Wah! No, check out all the socials. I have Epic Games creator code Pupsker, all of that jazz, but this is the 2024 start of year tier list. Judge it however you will. Thank you, thank you.